and I've got a boiler trace heating pack here that I bought off Amazon and this is also available in our Amazon store. I've left links to it in the comment below and also in the description. But don't click on those yet because we're going to find out exactly how this is installed. So in the bag we've got our instructions that you should read. If you're a man throw them away and if you're a woman read it and do it right the first time. Probably won't be allowed to say that anymore soon Emily, you're right. So we've got our trace heating wire. This little box on the end here is our thermostat kit. This will get screwed onto the wall outside so you can get an accurate reading of the outside air temperature. We also have a little RCD trip with a reset and a test button on it. The RCD will go inside the house. We've also got a small connecting block box as well, which is very nice. Plus we have a bung because we can actually install this inside a larger condensed pipe. So if you've got an inch and a quarter condensed pipe, you can actually cut the end off it, stuff our trace heating wire down the inside of the pipe and then make good the end hole with this little rubber bung here which is really handy and also in this particular kit they very kindly supply some tie wraps as well but you can use the ones that you've got I'm sure you've got laying around in your garage all right from that mass murder idea that you had of doing so firstly so firstly let me show you how we put the trace heating wire onto the pipe itself another thing that's handy to know about this stuff is it comes in different lengths don't we all so now you're probably getting an idea as to why I've bought 28 mil because if I had 22 mil, there wouldn't be any room to actually pop our trace heating wire in. So you've measured out your pipe, you know how long you need your trace heating wire there. So you've measured out your pipe, you know how long you need your trace heating to be, and usually it's not gonna be more than hopefully like, well, maximum like three meters, otherwise someone's run a lot of pipe outside and they shouldn't have run it out there in the first place. What? Now you can install this on the top or the bottom of the pipe, but, one thing it does say is if you're going to be going round bends, you have to be going around the outside of the bend, not the inside of the bend. It's just what the instructions say. Don't shoot the messenger, all right? So what you do is it's very simple. You just, you get your trace heating wire and you get your clip, your tie wrap, sorry, and you tie wrap it all the way along. Now, you could use more than what they've supplied when it comes to tie wraps because they've not supplied a load. So I would say try and, you know, tie wraps are cheap, frozen pipe is expensive. And in a minute, we're going to talk about how much one of these costs to run as well. So you get your trace heating wire all the way along. You do not cut it. If you need to make it shorter, you can't, I'm afraid. Just double it back and just make sure that there's a nice little section of pipe that's even warmer. How about that? A lucky section. It's one thing a lot of people don't seem to care about is that slight expenditure like this. I mean, this set costs 30 quid on Amazon, I think. And then the small amount of electricity that this uses, because this uses 40 watts of electricity, which in layman's terms, you could say, I don't know, it probably cost, if it was on for three hours a day, because it was cold for three hours a day, it would cost roughly 50p to a pound a month to run. How much does it cost to call a plumber out to constantly keep doing your condents. Hmm? And if it keeps freezing, it's gonna ruin your boiler. All these things, you know, it's just quite simple, isn't it? Straightforward. Now, I know you're gonna say, he hasn't gone all the way to the end. Story of my life. <laughs> but this is for demonstration purposes, or as they say in Italy, demonstrazione. So we've given ourselves the room because we've bought 28 mil insulation. It's gonna go around there beautifully like that. And it's gonna keep everything nice and warm on the condense line. But before we do that, let's just get our thermostat mounted up on the outside. If only all walls are that easy. Now, just imagine that I put a mitre in here, all right? All you true beasts. Wow, what are we doing here? Oh yeah, we're foolproofing the house. So it doesn't ever freeze ever again. Or well, the contents at least. When you get to a bracket, just make sure you mark it and just take those little segments out. Some of the more anal people who comment on these videos will say, well, that means there's gonna be a bit where it's not insulated properly. Well, it's better than me leaving a gap that lasts 10 inches along the back, which is something I've never done in my life. God, the amount of innuendo I've managed to fit into this one video, I'm actually really quite proud of. Now what I do is I just go along every foot or so with a tie wrap or every couple of feet with a tie wrap 
to make sure that's, that's nice and tightly round there. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do this here because I don't want to drill a lovely hole from my beautiful faux brick beast, as it's known. I'm going to call it my beautiful faux brick beast for the rest of my life. Now, these are very, very simple to wire up. They are effectively a plug. If you don't know how to wire a plug up, then I'm not going to show you how to wire this up. But it's a twin and earth cable. We've got our live, our neutral and our earth on here. We use a small connecting block that's supplied to join that to our little MCB that we've got on here. This wire here is the wire we join up to our trace heating and this wire here goes to our power supply. Now there's two ways of powering these depending on what kind of installation you've got. You could wire this up to the permanent live out of the boiler housing itself. If somehow you can't do that or you don't want to run the wire across the kitchen worktop because it will ruin the worktop and you don't want that to happen, then you can just wire this into a plug like I just said and plug it into the wall. It will then run completely on its own. It will run separate, you won't have to think about it again. So how do these work? A lot of you are going to be saying, well, you know, electricity is expensive at the moment and you're not wrong. How this works is we've got this thermostat out here. If it goes below three degrees, we open up a 40 watt feed, a very, very lightly trickled through feed of electricity that will heat this up along the trace of our pipe. If it goes above three degrees, guess what? It's going to cut off. So it only ever comes on when there's a chance of it freezing. 40 watts, like I just said, is not a massive amount of money. It's not going to break the bank, but the cost of this will pale into insignificance if you don't do this when you constantly have your condensed freezing. Wiring boiler trace heating is easy and looks like this, and if you can't do a plug, then you're not allowed to see it. However, I do want to reiterate that the junction box and the RCD have to go inside. They're not IP rated. So we're just going to put them up here on this side wall so I can demonstrate to you how this actually works. Right then, guys, it's on. I had to unplug this, take it home, shove it in the freezer to get it cold enough because I was trying to put these on there to get it cold, but it wouldn't get cold. So there we go. But look, to prove it to you, we've got an operate light on now. When this warms up again above three degrees, that will go out. One thing I'd like to say as well, I've taken it out of the freezer and it has got condense on it and probably condensation inside it. And it doesn't seem to be all that bothered. So if you look there, this little blue dot here is the actual, that's at four degrees now. But look, that is reading at 20 six degrees and that is what's running that trace heating there is what's running all across along here now because the thermal camera can see that heat we're not giving all that heat to the pipe are we we're actually getting rid of it and we can see that because the thermal camera can pick it up if we put on a little bit on here okay you're going to see that first little bit there but i just want you to take notice once we put this on you won't be able to see that heat anymore look at that that light now has completely disappeared apart from the little bit of wire that's sticking up it's always one of those funny things in the world of plumber parts. You kind of say about stuff, but a good way of proving it is to use a thermal camera. I'm very, very pleased to have this one here from Bosch to be able to show that to you. But there we go. That's how we do that. That's the, that is, if you always have a problem with your condensed pipe constantly freezing, you know, you keep having to go outside with a, a hot bucket or whatever to sort it all out, this here will actually fix it, okay? That is gonna warm that pipe up, lovely. And like when you put my hand in here, yeah, you can feel all the warmth inside the insulation. So there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe to the channel if this has helped you out. Please check out Warmzilla as well. They've been kind enough to sponsor this video so you can help us out by checking out their website as well. If your boiler does keep going wrong all the time, maybe you should think about upgrading and Warmzilla will definitely be able to help you out with finance options there. But there we go. That's how we do that. Really, really good solution. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video, guys. I'll see you in next week's video. Maybe it'll be a plumbing disasters one, but I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. And remember to hold tight. Jump in.